You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, right now I'm going to actually try something technical, and most of you know that uh, that comes with a serious roll of the dice. But if I can manage this, we're going to be connected, patched into one of the great architects of, I guess, living entertainment in a sense, a man who is responsible for, well, he's worked on everything from Disney's Peter Pan, he was an animator, to uh, design work on the Haunted Mansion, Tiki Room. Uh, It's a small world. He's the author of a rather brilliant book called It's Kind of a Cute Story that he co-wrote with Jeff Heinbach. And, uh, well, he's brilliant. Uh, He's a Disney legend. We're going to try and get in touch right now with Mr. Rolly Crump. Here we go. So here it goes. See how this works. Oh, man, it's dialing. Holy shit, I may have pulled this off. What's dialing? It's when the system calls him because he's not in town. Hello. Hi, I'm calling for Mr. Rolly Crump, please. Yes, you're talking to Rolly Crump. (laughs) Hey, how are you, Mr. Crump? It's Ethan here with Combat Radio. I'm fine, sir, and a good morning to you. Good morning. You're actually on. My honorary co-host for the moment is Uh, uh, Harrison Ellenshaw is with the son of the great Peter Ellenshaw. Uh huh. He's going to join us for this conversation, and I know you knew his. You were on the lot the same time as his father, another artist. Yeah. Yeah. so I figured, you know, if we're going to talk history, he's as good as a contributor as it gets with the actual Disney lore. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, I had already introduced you prior to dialing you up. I'm very, We're all very impressed with what you've done and what your contributions were as an artist. I spoke to you for a bit last night and told you how impressed I was with you as a person because when you started at Disney – the story was that they offered you something like 30 bucks a week and you had to work weekends doing like manhole covers or real work yeah, uh, yeah. to kind of get started. But if you could do me a favor uh, and take us through, you know, your first meeting with Walt Disney and what got you started with the studio. Okay. <clears throat> uh, excuse me for just saying I'll take a drink of water here. <clears throat> I did, excuse me. <clears throat> I didn't meet Wed, and I mean, I didn't meet Walt until I moved over to Wed from animation. And <clears throat> they decided, excuse me, <clears throat> they uh, invited me to join Wed, and I was thrilled about it because I was aware of what Wed was doing as far as Disneyland goes, even though I was in animation. So I was invited to meet Walt, <clears throat> and I walked in, and Walt shook my hand. He says. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on board, Roland. And I said, thank you, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Disney. And Walt said, no, Roland. He called me Roland. <clears throat> he says, um, it's Walt, and don't you forget it. I said, okay, fine, I'll do that. So the first few meetings I had with Walt, I was Roland. And then one meeting, uh, I became Owen. He says, Owen? And I, and I said, yes. And I, and I thought, that's okay. He can change my name if he wants. And uh, what it was was that there was a, another uh, writer on, on live action called Owen Crump. So I think Walt got my name mixed up with Owen Crump. So I was Owen for a while in a few meetings. <clears throat> and then one day uh, I became Orland. He says, Orland, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. And I thought, fine, if he wants, <laughs> if he wants to change my name, feel free. So I was Orland for a while. In fact, a lot of the guys I worked with way back then still call me Orland. It kind of became my nickname. And then, uh, of course, the, the coup de grace was I was in a meeting on the Haunted Mansion with Ian Neil Gracie, and Walt turned to Yale and said, Yale, I want you and, um, and what's-his-name here to work on the Haunted Mansion. So then I became what's-his-name. Well, the bottom line was it wasn't long after that that he gave me my nickname, Rolly, and it stayed Rolly from then on. So I felt good about that. But it was a lot of fun going through those names. And I, I talked to his daughter about it one time, and uh, I asked her, I said, did he have trouble with names? She says, he had horrible time with names. So she says, that's probably what happened. So that was my first introduction to Walt Disney. You know, it's 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 one of the things in your book. Your book comes across the book. It's kind of a cute story that you co-wrote with Jeff Heimbach. 
Uh, brilliant yeah. book. Brilliant. You know, your the, your sense of style in recapping the history and your work as an artist is really something I think everyone would enjoy. And I told you last night, I'm not going to rest until this book is in every household in America. Because Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. You, know, you have such a straightforward storytelling sense. I think the Haunted Mansion is the one thing that is a part of everyone's life, essentially, if you've ever been to Disneyland, and most of us have, where you, right. you, you can really see sort of how diverse your work was compared to what seemed to be Disney standards at the time. And the story behind it is interesting because you said that initially they didn't even want to introduce your concepts to Walt, that they kind of put you in a corner. And right, they- right. <clears throat> yeah, that was uh, all the uh, weird sketches I did. What happened was uh, when, I, when Yale and I were working on the illusions, for the Haunted Mansion, and we did a lot of research. We pulled all the drawings out that other designers had done on the mansion, and I just kind of had a feeling that um, it was just going to be an old spook house, and I didn't like that at all. I felt that it needed some imagination, and it needed something different. And, of course, what you do is you pull from your own imagination and things that you remembered. And I remember there were some films that I had seen one was uh, a Beauty and the Beast that was produced in France uh, back around 1949, and in there the the Beast was uh, like a big lion, and he lived in this gigantic uh, big castle. And when he went in, when he came into the castle, walked down the hallways, there were human arms holding torches that would lead the way for him as he went into his into his main salon, which was like a a big dining room or whatever. And in there, there were faces on the wall with green steam coming out of them. And, of course, there was a uh, a bowl of fruit on the table with a hand holding it. And as he reached over to take a grape, the, the hand would, you know, lean forward with the fruit. And I thought, you know, <clears throat> this is the kind of stuff that's got to be in the mansion. We've got to get some imagination in there and something that's really different, maybe a little surrealistic. So when uh, I started working, this was after the World's Fair, uh, I came back and I just started doing my own sketches of what I thought uh, should be in the mansion. I had a a candle man, I had a piece of sculpture that was a candle man, and his fingers were on fire, and he actually dripped, the wax was running down him, and he dripped. And of course, the interesting thing about it, working over there at, at WED, you can come up with an idea, but at the same time, you've got to learn to know how to build it. You just don't turn it over to somebody without knowing how it's going to be done. So I had that pretty well figured out. And, of course, I had developed the um, seance room in the very beginning. I did a lot of sketches, and so it was my idea to put a seance room in the Haunted Mansion. So I had some very unusual sketches on on the uh, seance room, because the seance room that actually finally got designed by Claude Coates was not the same one. It did. It just really didn't. I didn't feel it had the charm or the imagination that it should have had. So that all of a sudden became part of the weird drawings I was doing. I actually had a chair that would stand up and talk to you, and I had a, a coffin clock. It was a big coffin with a, made into a, like a grandfather clock, and then I had all kinds of other crazy little things in there. And what, what we did was I had all these sketches, and then Jack Fergus, who was a model builder, a very close friend of mine, said, Rolly, <clears throat> so I don't have anything to do. Can I sculpt some of those? I said, please do. So he built a little model of, of everything that I was drawing. So we had quite a table of what, the, of what we were going to present. And at that particular time, it was just something that was going to be in the mansion. And uh, so we did have a presentation to Walt, and all the guys had their stuff up on the walls and everything, and they decided, management decided, that maybe my stuff should be over in the corner (coughs) because nobody really cared for what I did. And so the meeting went on for about three hours, and finally uh, Walt said, is that it? And uh, they said, yeah. And he says, well, what's this stuff over here in the corner? And they said, well, that's something Rolly did. And he said, what is it that Rolly did? And and they said, you, you better ask him. We don't know. So that was kind of cute. So he said, Roland, he said, Roly, he said, what is it? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> so we both pushed our chairs over. They were on wheels over to the table with all the sculpting little models and all my drawings and everything. 
and I took him through it, and I explained to him. I said, I think we need more serialistic, imaginative stuff uh, in the ma- in there. So he said, yeah, but how are you going to use it? And I said, I don't know. I said, I just, it needs to be placed in there some way or another. Maybe it becomes part of the architecture or whatever. And Walt said, yeah, but how, how, how are you going to use it? Well, we went back and forth for about five or six minutes about, I don't know how you're going to use it. So finally, Walt stood up and he says, I'm going home now. I'm out of here. And he got up and left. And everybody came over to me later and said, we told you Walt wouldn't like what you did. And I said, yeah, but I had a lot of fun. And I think maybe I gave him a little something to think about. Well, the next morning I come to work and uh, at 7 o'clock and Walt Disney sitting in my chair at my desk. And uh, I looked over at him, and the first thing he said to me was, you son of a bitch. And I I said, whoa, what's that about? And he said, I didn't get an ounce of sleep last night thinking about all that weird stuff you showed me yesterday. And I said, oh, God, I'm really sorry. And he said, no, no, don't be sorry. He says, because after thinking about it all night, he says, I came up with an idea. He said, we're going to build a museum of the weird. And he says, Rolly, you can design all this weird stuff that you're doing, and we'll put it in a museum. And after people have been through the Haunted Mansion, they can wander through the museum, and they can stay in there as long as they want. And I said, oh, shit, Walt, that's a great idea. So I looked at him and kind of cackled and laughed about it, and I said, geez, that's great, Walt. You know, so then Dick Irvine, uh, that was ahead of Wet at that time, said, came over, and Walt said, go get the rest of the guys that were there yesterday and bring them out. So he did, and uh, <clears throat> the interesting thing about it was, Walt did have on the same clothes that he wore the day before. So obviously he just got up out of bed and put his clothes back on and came over. Anyway, Dick brought in all these other guys, all the other uh, designers and everything, and he took them through uh, what he felt was the Museum of the Weird. He spent a good 40 minutes explaining what the Museum of the Weird would be. And then he said to him, he said, now what we'll do is we'll build the mansion, but he says we'll put Rolly in charge of building the museum. He says, now I'm going to go home and go to bed. So that was the little story between Walt and I about how the Museum of the Weird came from, because basically it was his idea, and it was kind of neat, because working with him, he'd always thrown something on the table to help you go to the next step further up. So I felt I was really excited about that. That's one of those rare occasions where you go, yes, Walt Disney just called me a son of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he did. Yeah, he was kind of cute. You're listening to Combat Radio with Ethan Dettenmeyer, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. 